Do you suffer from tormenting thoughts from your past? How about regrets that you want to overcome? If this is you, then I have a guest today that is going to share with us all about how not to be tormented by our past. Now is the time to go forward and become all that God has intended for you to become. Today is your day to change your life and live in victory and wholeness. This is Your Path to Destiny with Dr. Candace Smithman. Welcome to Your Path to Destiny. I'm your host, Candace Smithman, and your life coach mentor. I'm so excited to have you with me today because we're going to be talking how not to be tormented by regrets or by things that have happened in our past, even in our childhood. All of us suffer from having a memory of difficult things that have taken place. But where we miss it is when we stay tormented in that place. We need to overcome, we need to get beyond these things. And sometimes we need just a little help to do that. And so today my guest, Dr. Barbara Lowe, is a licensed psychologist. She has a practice in Raleigh, Durham, in North Carolina. And she has been on television, she's a speaker, she um, spends a a lot of her time making women and men too, both learn to be whole from the inside out. And so I am so excited to have her with me today because she is an expert in how not to stay tormented by thoughts of the past. Thank you, Barbara. I want to be like, because <laughs> I am so excited to be here. I'm honored to be here. You're such a dear uh, friend of mine, a new friend, uh, and I'm so passionate about this topic because all things work together for the good for those who love God. And that means in the past, that means the mistakes in the present and the future, all things can become beautiful in Him. That's right, I know. It's wonderful to know that when we come to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that He makes us brand new mm -hmm. on the inside. Yes. And all that needs to happen is our soul needs to catch up. Our mind, our will, uh -huh. and our emotions need to catch up with that inward change that happens yes. when we receive Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so you're an expert in this area, not only because you have studied psychology and ran the good race and become a workman approved of the Lord, but because you yourself are an overcomer. Ooh. You've had some difficult things happen in your past with your mother and your father. Mm -hmm. And today we're gonna focus on your relationship with your dad mm -hmm. and uh, just how you had difficulty uh, in this relationship. I want you to share it uh, with our audience today because I know that they're really gonna be set free yes. when they hear it. Yes, so uh, both my parents grew up in domestic violence. They both grew up with addicts in their family. And it's interesting, I remember one time my mom told me, uh, you know, much later in life, she said, I, I think I was abused as a child, or I saw abuse. And she described what she had done to me, and she still didn't know that she had done that to me. But with my, so with my mom, she would do things like uh, pull me out of the house by my hair in drunken rages and, and kick me out of my pajamas as a 13 year old. Mm -hmm. You know, just tell me she hated me. So I moved from there, my parents were divorced and I moved in with my dad, who was ju really just as broken. He, I, I found out right before he died that he'd been molested his whole growing up. Mm -hmm. He, his dad used to beat his mom. His mom was an alcoholic, died young. So my dad didn't have very many parenting skills and when my mom left him, it really devastated him. So I went through what's called emotional incest with my dad, where uh, he would lean on me as a partner, we would sleep in the same bed, he would talk to me about intimate things that he shouldn't talk to me mm. about. And, uh, and so I pretty much stayed high that whole year. My dad and I got high a lot together mm. and uh, my dad's relatives were connected in the mafia anyway. They felt like it wasn't good to have me there, and so I had no one. Uh, and uh, he sent me back to live with my mom. I was homeless for part of my senior year because neither one of them wanted me. I found Christ at 19, and everything changed. Now, fast forward, so, some amazing growth in Christ. Some, some difficult things happened. I went through a divorce that I didn't want and some other things, but God was so faithful. And uh, I remember my mom had cancer and we, we had just found out and I was an adult, I was a mom and I, uh, I went to, my dad had been having what I would call a psychotic break. And uh, I think he had gotten into some drugs he shouldn't have gotten. So he was calling, calling, calling and I didn't realize the extent to what he was going through. 
I was sharing the gospel with him, but I was also kind of starting to get focused on my mom who was about to go into surgery because we just found out she had cancer. So I'm, I went to my mom's house. I didn't take my dad's last call. Mm. It came at midnight at night. I was in bed. I didn't know that he was going to shoot himself that night. Mm. Yeah. So my dad died that night. Uh, it was December 26th, the day after Christmas. And I didn't even know for two days because I was dealing with my mom. And I thought, oh, my dad must have settled down. That's why he stopped calling. Well, in that paranoid state, he, he shot himself. And I found out, I'll never forget the phone call, of my stepbrother, where I answered the phone. I had just gotten home from being with my mom. I answered the phone and he just said, I'm sorry, Barbara. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I remember buckling down, you know, going down uh, in, to my knees and just that primal wail, mm. you know, because what had happened a year before is my dad, who we had been kind of estranged by my dad's choices, uh, he came and visited me and we reconciled. Mm. And although I never saw my dad reconcile with Christ, and unless he had a last minute conversion, uh, I, I don't know. Here's the beautiful thing, though. I didn't take his last call, but I, don't, I am not tormented by that. Amen. And I know as a psychologist, so many people would be. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be honest, I had survivor's guilt. But I was able to tell myself in that, and the Holy Spirit helped me. He helped me. You know, because I was a psychologist, I had to grieve by myself a little bit because I couldn't be on Facebook. It was suicide. Like you can't just, yes. people can't handle that anyway. But he helped me. The Holy Spirit helped me. And he, 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 he helped me to realize that even though I feel guilty, doesn't mean I am guilty. Mm. You see, survivor's guilt is normal. But, and we can feel guilty and it doesn't mean we are guilty. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's the power of the gospel, mm -hmm. you know, and learning to overcome that felt guilt mm -hmm. and how that felt guilt can transform itself into false guilt. Mm -hmm. And the enemy, he breathes on how our soul is functioning. Uh -huh. You know, he can't change anything about our spirit because it becomes brand new when we receive Jesus. Yeah. But he can surely mess with our yeah. soul you know, and cause us to continue to carry the weights. Now, I like what you said, survivor's guilt. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I want us to continue to talk uh, more about that. But that is a very, very interesting term, especially since we, um, you know, people are experiencing and have been experiencing a lot of loss over mm -hmm. the past year or so. And, you know, as people experience, you know, loss in our environments, but as they continue to experience losses of all yeah. different kinds, it can raise up a yeah. lot of different feelings. And when you are living your life and you know that you are a part of connecting with, mm -hmm. with somebody like you were connecting with your father, it is so easy to carry that guilt with us, but to yes. not carry it shows so much of the overcoming power and Ooh. victory. Oh, Let me tell you, there is supernatural power to live in hope, to live in life, to, to, uh, you know, what I, one of the things I want to share with you later in the show is, is how the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He gave me a word to stand on that I'm still standing on. I'm telling you, I am not tormented by that. Ooh, he's so good. He is good. He is good. And I know that there are people watching today. And if you're watching today and you're suffering from survivor's guilt, or you've been in a relationship that's been very, very important to you and you've lost somebody that you loved, you couldn't stop it. You couldn't prevent it. There's a whole lot of reasons why we experience guilt. Maybe we're actively involved with something, but maybe we have nothing to do with it at all. But the enemy puts that guilt upon us. Mm -hmm. And so if that's you today, I want you to stay with us because we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk more with Dr. Barbara about how she got over this guilt and she became a survivor with no guilt. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Dr. Candace Smitheman is an international prophetic voice, healing minister, author, and pastor who travels the world sharing how to access the heavenly realms and live the resurrected life. 
Her passion is to see people healed and delivered and come into a knowledge of who they are in Christ as royal heirs seated with Him in the heavenly realms. She believes everyone can access heaven and walk in the power of God. In her meetings, your faith will increase and you will feel the presence of God and see miraculous healings. Dr. Candace loves to teach and train in the supernatural and mentor you in the glory. She offers many classes in her School of the Supernatural where you too can learn to release heaven, the glory, and walk in the power of God. She's also a mentor life coach and founder of Dream Mentors International, an organization that teaches and trains biblical life coaches. Check out her website and subscribe to her YouTube channel, Instagram, and Facebook for more resources. I'm so glad you stayed with us. I'm talking with Dr. Barbara Lowe, and we're talking about how not to be tormented from your past, how to overcome survivor's guilt, or guilt that we might have of just about anything through the overcoming power of Jesus Christ. In Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, the Lord speaks about himself, and he says, I am the Lord who heals you. And in Psalm 36, seven, he says, the, the psalmist says, how priceless is your unfailing love, O God. People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Yes, people do. I do, Barbara does, anybody who's living and surviving takes refuge in the shadow of the Almighty. And so we're talking about your, your father mm -hmm. and what happened there and how you have overcome. I mean, God has supernaturally healed you mm -hmm. of this survivor's guilt. Yeah. And so what are some of the pathways, some of the things that the Lord spoke to you mm -hmm. in order to cause you to be quickened in your soul to be able to move forward? One thing that was really powerful that the Lord spoke to me was that he told me, Barbara, there are some things that only I can shoulder and eternal realities as far as thinking about where your dad is and, and what's happening with him, it's a no fishing zone. You are not to go there. You are not to think about that because you had your dad here on earth and you can rejoice in what you had with your earthly father. And there was pain there, yes. but there was good, some good there too. Like uh, when we're whole, we can realize there's a mixture. Mm -hmm. You know, we can kind of uncouple the good dad from the bad dad a little bit and know, realize they're both there. And that's part of the healing process. But he said, uh, that's a no fishing zone. You had him on earth and you're gonna have your heavenly family. And you can rejoice in this and you can rejoice in that. And as far as eternal realities in your dad, you're not to go there. You're just to live in, I, I had my earthly father and I have my heavenly father and I have my heavenly family. So I don't know. And that's okay. You know, when, when I, uh, I had to go to his house in Hawaii, well, my mom, I, I didn't let her know what had happened because she was recovering from surgery for stage three cancer. And so I went to his house and I had to clean up where he'd shot himself and stuff. Mm. It was it was really hard, but I saw the notes uh, that he that from when we had been talking. So I know I know he knows I shared the gospel with them, mm. but there was been gr there's been grace to not go to those realities, and that's a grace gift. Yes. Yes, you have to know when the Lord is saying, I want you to keep your eyes on me. Mm -hmm. I want you to keep your eyes on heaven. I want to keep your eyes on the fact that you're seated with me in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. And don't allow yourself to get messed up in what's happening here in the earth realms. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's natural when we have parent-child connections, mm -hmm. things of that sort, that we want to go, we want to allow ourselves to go to those places. Mm -hmm. But it's not healthy for us, mm -hmm. you know? And the Lord wants us to live yes. in, in his presence and live in the joy and live yes. in the peace. We can't do that if we are surrounded by memories mm -hmm. that are haunting us. Yeah. So what would you tell people today, those that are watching, that have been haunted by memories mm -hmm. that they cannot get rid of? What would you say to them? Well, we do need to process our feelings. Uh, you know, I'm a psychologist. Grief is, is a good thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was abandoned by both my parents. They're, they have both passed away now. Uh, I've been through, unfortunately, I, I married into the pattern twice. I've been through two divorces that I didn't want. Married two Christian men who could not love me, who were unfaithful. 
so that happened. I've lost, I've had a full term stillborn. So I've, I've had things happen in my life. So I do, I do feel like I have some authority both as a psychologist and from life experiences to speak to this. And we do, we do need to grieve. We need to feel those feelings. But Jesus never came to any person and said, you know, if only that hadn't happened or if only you hadn't done that or, you know, it's always look forward, look forward. I mean, one of the hardest things was all I ever wanted was to have this beautiful family that I didn't have growing up. And my kids saw me go through two divorces. And but Jesus, when I bring my kids to Jesus, he never says, well, if only he says, eyes forward, honey, eyes forward, because I have so many good things for you. And I am now happily married to the man who used to be my pastor and who's known me for 30 years and who's seen me when I was hot off the struggle bus, like being drug in, right? I mean, they used to have what to do about Barbara meetings. That's how bad, <laughs> that's how messed up I was. So I'm loved, I, I'm known, but I'm here to say that I know that no matter what you've been through, no matter what you've lost, no matter who's abandoned you, that you can feel so loved and so much at peace. Yes, His grace is sufficient for yes. us, for His power is made perfect in weakness. And that's the amazing thing is that when we're weak, His grace is greater. Yes. And, you know, wherever you're at right now in your weaknesses, just rest in the fact that there is enough grace for what you're going through yes. right now. There is enough of His peace. There is enough of who He is to overcome every area that feels like it's less than or that it's insecure or that's not whole. You know, nothing missing, nothing broken is, is shalom or so-so, right? Mm -hmm. Salvation, deliverance, mm -hmm. healing. And so if you uh, are watching us today and you're suffering from this level of intensity with guilt, know that your guilt and condemnation went on the cross mm -hmm. yes. with Jesus. That means you are stamped not guilty. You are not guilty. And so you need to tell the devil that he has no authority here and he cannot mm -hmm. torment you. No torment yes. is allowed. Yes. See, if we give the enemy access though, he'll take it, won't he, mm -hmm. Dr. Barbara? Yes, he's looking for that place of agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, we know we live, uh, Katie Souza, our friend yeah. teaches on the enemy with Legion that Legion said, Jesus, you're tormenting me because I can find no place of agreement with you. Yes. The enemy, when we look at the spirit realm, the spirit realm is always looking to give birth through humans, like right. even like with the Neptilium and uh, I mean, the Holy Spirit births, you know, the spirit realm loves to give birth through us. Mm -hmm. And so we want to always align with the spirit. But I want to say you can be more than not tormented. You can be full of belonging, full of love. I mean, I know we talked about this we're talking about supernatural here, but I know what I'm feeling and living is supernatural because yes. anyone who went through what I've gone through should not feel this much peace, this much love, this much hope. Yes. This much purpose. Yes. And it's true that God supernaturally delivered you. Mm -hmm. However, we also know Okay, if you don't get some specific touch from heaven, you can touch yourself with the living word of God. Mm -hmm. The living word of God spoken to yourself, just picking up the word of God and reading it. Like in Mark chapter five, verses 32, uh, 32 through 34, we, we understand about the woman with the issue of blood. Uh -huh. And the word says specifically, the woman's faith made her whole. Right? And that word whole is the so so, yeah. right? It made her whole. But what? Faith. So having faith in God, faith in what Jesus has done for us is enough to shut out the enemy. Yes. Our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions come in agreement with the Word of God. We work the Word of God, and then we find deliverance for yes. ourselves. We can have self deliverance. Mm -hmm. And so whether or not you receive a supernatural touch from God, and we are going to pray that you do yeah, for sure, you will, you can activate the supernatural healing of God simply by activating the word of God. Mm -hmm. And you can get healing for yourself in that area. Yes. The Lord does not want you to carry guilt, shame, mm -hmm. depression, fear, anxiety, he doesn't want you to carry any of those things, but sometimes we have to work the word. Oh, so much. Until we see mm -hmm. the outcome. Yeah. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we bring you to that place where you leave this program knowing that you've been saved, healed, and delivered. And so when we come back, 
We're going to pray with you. We're going to pray with you for supernatural healing, for a release of angels to come and be with you right where you're at. Mm -hmm. The Lord wants you to live in fullness, in wholeness, in a deep and abiding relationship with Him. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Are you in need of personal counseling or coaching or would like some direction and encouragement? Dr. Candice is a board certified counselor who walks in the gifts of prophecy and healing and she wants to mentor you. In her School of the Supernatural, Dr. Candice will teach you through her e-courses, books, and many other additional resources that will help you strategize and release heaven in every area of your life. Her classes on the supernatural will equip you to live in the heavenly realms on a daily basis. You can also schedule some personal time with Dr. Candice, where she will encourage and pray for you in private 45-minute sessions to help you walk through personal issues in your life and propel you into your purpose and destiny. Visit her website for all of her resources and follow and subscribe to Dr. Candice on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. I'm so glad that you stayed with us because we're going to pray you through to a victory today. It's going to be wonderful to see that guilt just fall off of you and you can enter in to that deep and abiding relationship with the Lord and that place of freedom. So Dr. Barbara, can you walk us through some steps of healing? What are some of the things that you actually did Mm -hmm. or how you help others Mm -hmm. to actually get through the survivor's guilt? Yeah, even this morning I was reading Isaiah 53, 5 and uh, in the Passion Translation because I'm so passionate about the Holy Spirit and Father and Jesus, they're my favorites. Uh, But anyway, uh, it says that in His wounds we became whole. And like there's almost like this connotation of us laying into those wounds. Like I love to cuddle with God and uh, sometimes I'll even imagine cuddling into His wounds. And and, uh, in in the note it talks about through oneness with Him we become whole. But we have these different parts of self. We have adult parts of self, child parts of self. We have the inner critic, which is a like kind of like a manager to, mm-hmm. uh, that kind of manages us to not be rejected. And we have these parts that are unsanctified. Mm-hmm. And we grow in that sanctification process by bringing these parts to the Lord and letting these parts become one with Him. Uh, it's not a one-time thing. We also bring him into these memories. So I can bring him back into this memory with my dad or, or getting the call and not taking the call. And I can go back there with him. I can ask him, what are you saying? What were you doing? And he shows me. I can even have an experience with him that is different from what I actually had, where he almost gives me a redo, a restoration. And that lies and just lays into something called my implicit memory, where I can have a different felt sense. Mm-hmm. There have been times where uh, I've told him, you know, my life wasn't that bad. And he's like, what? But because it's because so, um, sometimes I forget because of the felt sense of what he's given me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now I just want to share with the viewers, the self or the different parts of the self is really the different parts of the soul. The so soul. we talk about the mind, the will, and the emotions. It's mm-hmm. the way the mind will hold on to specific memories. Mm-hmm. All right. And we uh, sometimes fragment our memories are kind of fragmented into different compartments. Mm-hmm. And so Dr. Barber is really sharing with us about how to deal with these kind of different compartments. Yeah. So just share a kind of a quick example of somebody who may have lost their father. Like I lost my father as a child, all right, and I suffered greatly from it. Mm-hmm. Now, I didn't actually have guilt associated with that, right. but I had loss. So how would you walk me through bringing my memory into that place sure. of fullness? Well, there are a lot of different ways to work with memory, and I'm trained in a couple different ways. But one way that we could work with memory is, let's say you're, ha- let's say you're having a moment where you felt really lonely in an interaction with your husband. And I might say, well, tell me about how that feels in your body. So you would imagine uh, how, that, how that feels in, in your body. Perhaps you say, I feel alone. I feel like almost like my skin is aching. I feel like an empty cavern on the inside. And I I would say, now scroll back on that memory to just not on the memory, but actually on the felt sense in your body to a time you felt that before, maybe a real salient time Mm -hmm. in your childhood. So let's say, you know, we scroll down on web pages. We're going to scroll down on that felt sense, that feeling 
You know, God gave us feelings. He has feelings. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and in this case, the feeling is giving us information. So let's scroll back on that. And let's say we land to a time where you're sitting in your room. And sometimes the Lord will help me with this. He'll give me some prophecy. But I actually see you sitting in your room with your legs crossed and you looking down. You're sitting on the floor. But in this normal thing, sometimes God might give me a word, but um, but you probably would see yourself somewhere. So mm -hmm. let's say that you saw yourself sitting cross-legged and, and you're crying or you just feel really lost and really alone. And then we'll welcome, we can welcome a couple things into that place. First of all, we definitely wanna welcome in the Holy Spirit, Jesus, Father. I have found that Christians, even Christians who really love God, filled with the Spirit, are comfortable with different parts, more comfortable with certain parts of the Godhead. So when we're working in with the yes. most vulnerable parts, we want to bring in the part that they're most comfortable with. Amen. So let's say you're most comfortable with the Holy Spirit. I know you love all three. Mm -hmm. You know they're three yes. in one. But let's say the Holy Spirit. So we bring in the Holy Spirit. We might even say, Do you want some angels there? Right? So we're giving you an experience where God is speaking to you. We might ask God to speak with you. That's good. Now some of my clients and students might be more aware, more more able to hear him. And like if you were my if we were working together, you you have a strong, um, you've practiced that connection. Yes. But so sometimes I might even model, you know, I wonder if the Holy Spirit might be saying, um, oh, sweet baby girl, it's okay, and I'm with you, and mm -hmm. I'm your daddy, right? So we might do a little bit of, of role play, kind role of. play and imagery. Yes. We can also bring in parts of self uh, from the self. Like I, well, I'm a good psychologist, right? I'm at least mm -hmm. decent, right? Yeah. And that's a well-developed part of self. So when, my, when I work with my own self, I can bring in my psychologist part of self. One of the things I've realized along the way is I not only have God, but I have me. And that might sound like the flesh, but I grew up not feeling like I had anyone, including myself. Yes. And God has given me back as a resource you know, as I've been made in his image and conform more to his image. And so we can bring in those, also those nurturing parts of self to learn how to talk to yourself different and be with those parts. Okay, this is good. So I know as you're listening, Dr. Barbara share, she's also sharing from a very, you know, psychological place, mm -hmm. but we want to bring it to the place of supernatural. We want to yeah. bring it to that place of really helping you at home be where you're at. So we're going to pray you through some pain that you're having in your life. Dr. Barbara, will you join me as we pray yeah. for the people mm -hmm. today? So if you're feeling this pain anywhere in your heart, I want you to begin to articulate that pain, whatever mm -hmm. that is, you know, look Lord, I'm sad about this. I'm upset about this. Mm -hmm. And let's invite the Holy Spirit to come to you right where you're at. We're going to invite the angels to come and join you right where you're at mm -hmm. so that you are able to be set free in this moment. So Dr. Yes. Barbara, I'm going to have you pray a very simple prayer yeah. just like that to release the people. Yes. I sense the Lord has given me the story of Lazarus right now. And with Lazarus, he cleared everyone away and he was just dealing with one dead thing. And so I want you to have one thing and the Lord is about to speak life to this thing. And this is the scripture he's given me. So um, I'm going to speak to that thing that mm -hmm. feels dead and feels broken to come alive again. All right. So in Jesus name, you take that one thing. Don't heap up a pile of things, just that one big thing. And in Jesus name right now, we speak life. We speak hope. We speak wholeness into that one thing right now. In the name of Jesus, we tell you to arise. We tell dead dreams to arise. We tell broken places to be whole and to take the, the death clothes off right now in Jesus' name. Father, we just praise you and we thank you that we are receiving your supernatural healing. We are surrounded by your supernatural heavenly host, Father, and we thank you, you bringing us to that place of wholeness and healing. I want to hear from you. Reach out to me at CandaceSmithman.com. Go to DrBarbaraLow.com and reach out to Dr. Bar Barbara. We will see you later. God bless.